Hi, I'm Dr. Walter Matwichuk, and today, in today's video, I'll be discussing the topic of hurting other people's feelings. As you know, I'm an REBT psychologist, and we often help people with anxiety that occurs in interpersonal relationships and prevents them from asserting themselves. And it's not uncommon to hear people say things like, well, I didn't say what I wanted to say because I didn't want to hurt the other person's feelings. And I've given quite a bit of thought to this um, idea of hurting other people's feelings. And I think it's really important to explain to people RUBT's position. I think much of the problem uh, comes in when we assume responsibility for other people's feelings. In RABT, we talk about the principle of emotional responsibility. And that principle essentially says that we largely or primarily determ determine our emotional experience, particularly when it's disturbed. So when we are angry or insulted or hurt, we largely do this to ourselves. Other people may assert themselves with us, but it's our rigid and extreme attitudes that lead to the emotional disturbance we experience. Now, this applies to the other person as well. When you assert yourself with them, they very well may get upset, but it doesn't mean that you caused their upset. Now, so if you want to liberate yourself and be capable when it is important to you to be able to do so, to assert yourself with others, the first step you need to do is not assume responsibility for their feelings. You need to really give some thought to this idea of who largely or is the more important factor in the feelings that a person feels. Is it you or them? Now, certainly when you assert yourself, your expressed preference for their behavior interacts with what they want to hear. So in a sense, you could contribute to their feelings of disappointment or displeasure or annoyance. But if they experience disturbance, emotional disturbance that's unhealthy, they largely create those unhealthy feelings. And therefore, you would be well advised not to buy into the idea that you're the cause of their emotional upset. Now, people will say, well, okay, I recognize that I largely upset myself, but other people don't know REBT, and they may very well conclude that it is me who's causing their feelings. And my response to that is, well, that's true. They may not know REBT, they probably don't, and they may attribute their bruised feelings to your assertive behavior, so it's good to take that into account and, and, and be as tactful as you can, but don't take responsibility for their feelings and give up your need for approval. Because if you say, well, they're acting under a bad model of emotion, they think I'm causing their feelings, but I need their approval, then you're going to be a prisoner of their bad model of emotion. And so what I would encourage you to do is to challenge your idea that you need their approval, maintain a healthy desire for their approval, and then when it is of sufficient importance to you to assert yourself with them, ask them to stop doing what you'd like them to stop doing or ask them to start doing what you'd like them to start doing, um, recognize that they may not listen to you and don't anger yourself, but at least you've been able to assert yourself and in and of itself that will likely help you to feel a bit better. So I would suggest that you give good thought to the idea that it will be a bit uncomfortable to assert yourself with other people that you, but that you largely can bear that discomfort. And if they ruffle their feathers that's certainly bad. It's not the bloody end of the world, but 
it's likely to be bad. And therefore, you know, it's important that you do this type of assertion when it's important to you. Um, the other thing it's really important to do is not to down yourself and consider yourself lesser as a person if in the end their feelings are hurt. Uh, people will sometimes rationalize and, and excuse their inhibition and say, well, it's just not worth it. And the fact of the matter is, is my guess is that it is the passive person's low tolerance for the awkward moment that is keeping them from expressing themselves and then leading them to have this biased view that it's not worth it. So if you if it is worth it, take into account the fact that you may very well be dealing with somebody who will be either embarrassed or mildly insulted if you assert yourself. Recognize that there are instances where it may very well be worth it for you to risk their disapproval. And then when it is worth it, go ahead and do it. So I'd like to encourage you to um, do a homework assignment and risk social disapproval and when it's worth it to you to do so. And as you're risking this social disapproval, it's important for you to push yourself by thinking rationally and saying things like, it's going to be uncomfortable for me to assert myself. Not unbearable. I certainly can stand it. It's worth it. And I commit myself to setting some limits with this person and asserting my point of view. I certainly want their approval, but I don't need it. And in this instance, I've considered the reaction they may have, and it appears to me well worth risking their disapproval. And so I shall, in fact, have this awkward discussion and assert myself and set limits with other people. RBT is a philosophy of liberation, of critical thinking, of self-responsibility. And I really think that it's important for you to think through this idea that you're responsible for your feelings, I'm responsible for my feelings. Yes, we may contribute to the feelings each of us feel, but in the end, it's best if I see myself as the primary contributor to my disturbed emotions. Um, it's good not to see and attribute my hurt feelings to others because I may very well be overly sensitive and this could undermine my long-term well-being in my relationships with other people. When people give me feedback, it's important to listen to it without putting myself down and to grow from it. And so I think the awkward moment can be helpful for both you and the other person. And I would encourage you to develop this type of mindset that you can bear these awkward moments and assert yourself. Finally, before I close, I'd like to remind you that every Saturday morning, I hold a conversation with a volunteer on Zoom, and you're welcome to join me. And in observing my conversation with a volunteer about a real problem, you very often will see how your thinking that leads to your self-defeating behavior may overlap with the thinking of the volunteer and thereby derive some benefit from observing the conversation. I call this the Saturday Rational Emotive Behavioral Conversation Hour. It takes place at 9 a.m. Eastern in, um, in, on the East Coast of the United States and 2 p.m. in uh, London. And you can um, figure it out by going to my website. I have all the time zones and the times that it occurs in different parts of the world. And people from all the world will attend and talk to me about a problem. And it's been a very interesting uh, conversation. We've done it now for over 30 weeks. And so I encourage you to attend. If you'd like an invitation, you could write me at rebtdoctor at gmail.com. Or go to my website, rebtdoctor.com, 
and um, see the tab on the conversation hour and then you could submit your email address through my website. So I'd like to thank you for your attention and I hope that you find REBT useful, helpful, and liberating and that you experience more pleasure and less pain in life as a result of learning this philosophy.